Hello and welcome along to a new series of videos on the Kianski YouTube channel. As many of you know, working on cars, restoring them, driving them, uh, it's a passion of mine. And so it's photography and making videos. And I figured I spent all this time making threads online about you know all the work that I do with photos and whatnot. And sometimes it's just a lot easier to do them with videos. And so that is the point of this pilot episode to see how that goes, to see what you guys think. And um, I won't have too much time this year with all the house stuff, but I figured I could also record that and kind of include it. Um, and then hopefully by the end of this year, be able to do more car stuff, but we'll see how that goes. So uh, I did a lot of work on my 2003 BMW N5 that just sold a couple days ago to uh, Harry, who actually texted me this morning saying the ABS light came on. Not sure what that's all about, um, but it, it, it turned off, so we're fine. And uh, yeah, now that I got all these lights set up in the garage, it should be doable to do it in here. I did add a new camera to my kit. Uh, it's a Sony A6400, and it should be better. Actually, it will be better than my DSLR Nikon, uh, since Nikon's usually better for photos and Sony and Canon are better for videos. So I do need to get a wider lens to do the car uh, stuff to show the engine bay, to go underneath the car, or when I'm inside the car, I need something a little bit wider. So some of the parts that I'll be including in the video right now uh, may not be ideal. It's the pilot episode. What we'll be doing today, we uh, will be replacing the uh, short shifter, or putting in a short shifter in the Volkswagen in the new 2019 GTI that I got back in Thanksgiving of last year. And uh, it's a Euro spec uh, version, so it's about a 20% decrease in throw and uh, not too, nothing too crazy, but should be pretty interesting. So we'll start with that. All right, so here we are inside the car. So I wanted to show what the stock shifter situation looks like. Go ahead and go through the six gears right now. Not too bad, it could be a little bit shorter and a little bit sharper with a little less jiggling going on while it's in gear. So let's see how this goes. To start off, we're going to take off the snorkel for the air filter since the air filter needs to come off and then the battery will need to come out and then we'll have access to the shifter down at the bottom. So, looks like T25s. I may or may not have cheated knowing that it was a T25. Coolant line gets displaced. Easy does it. Now, let's see how this works. Ah, you know, I always wondered how that works. Yeah, there we go. Through here, through there, and there. Very good. Aha. Two more screws. is holding this in. It's freed up over there. Classic tabs. This is a very complex part. And in Mexico. Now we have, I believe, a vacuum hook line. And then another one for the, I think this goes for the air pump. Yep. Gotta take that clamp off. Sarah will remember a clamp like that on her uh, on her Audi. That was a fun time getting that off. Before I had 
this uh, this tool, which makes life incredibly, incredibly easy. As I will now demonstrate. Let go, buddy. Okay. Now that that's gone, that comes off. This just gets pulled straight up. I don't think it's actually held down with anything. Aha. Okay. Is there a third one? There's a third one somewhere. Probably needed to take this off from this side. I am what is this for? Is this just like another breather vent? I don't, uh, yeah, it's held on with threes, these three little grommets. Yeah, this must just be, I don't think this actually hooks up to anything. Set that aside. All right, now with the air filter removed, we can see the stock shifter down there. Looks like the bleed nipple for the clutch fluid and the three posts that were holding up the uh, the air filter. When you're neutral, you can actually push this down and that's the position you want it to be before you swap it out. Now I'm gonna take off the uh, battery, start off with the negative, then the positive, remove that, and then we'll have access to those three bushings. I'm gonna guess that's a 10. Yep. Cool, that's that. There we go. Cover that up. We have that nut. Well, I guess we can take off this little cover. I just realized you can't see it very well. Let's get this foam padding out of the way. Cut that. Uh, I guess I don't have to. Yeah, I probably will. But for now, let's remove the two bolts. T25. Nope. Probably T30. We've got a nut right there. should be able to come straight out. A little bit of persuasion. There we go. And we've got another clip. One more T30. What did I do with my magnet? Found it. All right. Battery tray out. A heads up that I have disconnected the Rode shotgun mic and just using the camera's stereo mics just to see how this sounds standing behind the camera right now. You can see the, the shifter again and then now you can also see the bracket that has two visible but a total of three rubber bushings that I'll be replacing and that attaches down to the actual uh, gearbox. And that bracket essentially holds the, the cables from coming through. And we'll start with Loosening these cables. So much easier on the bench. And it's one. Okay, and two. I believe that clip needs to get removed. Okay, so just a little plastic clip. We got it. That to come out, and then now the only thing holding it in is that nut. Is that also 13? Yep. The only thing holding it on is probably just friction. Back and forth.
that is that. All right, now that we got both parts out, we can see what the differences are. Not a whole lot from the top, they pretty much look identical, but if you flip them upside down, you'll notice that the pivot point on the Eurospec short shifter is down here, whereas on the stock one, it's up there. So that shorter travel is what gives us the shorter shifts. Okay, now it's time to take out the two bolt and one nut for that uh, bracket right there. Also 13 millimeter. Let's add some more lighting. Looks like we need a deep socket for that one. I mean, on one hand, I don't necessarily need to take it out, but it would be a lot easier. Ah, there we go. So here are the, the rubber bushings that will get replaced. And then here are the aluminum bushings. 6061 for those who are interested. A little nice uh, 42 draft designs uh, engraving on there. Looks nice. Nothing, nothing all that fancy, but also doesn't need to be. Well, sure enough, ran into a snag. I needed to put in the cable into this cable holder first before tightening that down because uh, for the past few minutes I haven't been able to shift properly. I'm going to take this off, the cable back in. Take this clip off again. And then, since it's the second time, canning this off should be easier. So we're back in neutral, so that's good. I'm going to go adjust the shift knob, make sure that's back in neutral. Okay, so that looks good. Now another thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of grease on, uh, on this surface right here, since that's where this little plastic piece uh, starts to slide. Inside the holders or neutral so before I tighten the nut I'm gonna go inside go through the gears make sure it feels right okay going into first second third fourth fifth sixth well, that feels good that gear is reverse yep. I like it and we'll tighten the nut also put the clips back on for the now this needs to be tightened to 25 newton meters. Let's stop the old torque wrench. Now that we are back at this stage, I think we'll go back to time lapse mode since that was the extent of the interesting parts. Here we go. Swap. Yeah, no, that, that feels better. I know it probably doesn't come across through the video, but it's definitely uh, shorter, crisper. It's still a little bit of jiggling, but it's alright. That looks good. Uh, ultimately, it's all about how it drives, so 
I'm gonna go take it for a spin, grab some food, because it's now like 9.30 at night, and I started three, I think, but put some breaks here and there. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a spin, and I'll let you know what the uh, driving impressions are. Okay, we are back. Went out and did a test drive, and it is definitely better. So throws are shorter, feels a little bit tighter. It's not a nine day difference, but that really wasn't the goal. Um, it's definitely more enjoyable to drive, and ultimately it's worth it. Good news there. Did struggle a bit, ran into some issues, which uh, really just makes the end result a lot more enjoyable. Not that I do that stuff on purpose, but the more I struggle, the more gratifying it, it is at the end. So uh, every time I shift, which is often, I get to enjoy it, and that's uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving, really. That was hopefully an interesting mod. Um, looking forward to, to doing more and making more videos. It's been fun, and until next time, thanks for watching.